Hey guys, it's Maka here from the Gemsite Forums and 7 I just thought I'd take you through a bit of an evolution of this guitar and how it got made. I'm sure you're all sick of the side of it by now, but um, I'll, I'll explain it for you anyway. Uh, this here, this was something I did before the Gem Design Contest was even announced. It was about three weeks before I come home from a gig and I was sitting out in my shed here and uh, pretty drunk. And I started doodling on the paper just because I was bored, you know, just drinking and smoking and watching music TV and uh, drew all this. And uh, a few weeks later, my brother rang me and said that Steve Vai had a competition on for uh, designing a gem. And I thought, well, I don't know what I will, uh, I don't really know what uh, I would draw on a guitar. And then I came out to the shed and found this lying around. So I've kept this for posterity. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I saw this and thought, hey, that might look might look pretty good on a guitar. So I started, you can see, uh, there's the eyes there that I, I pinched for the design, you'll see that. Uh, so yeah, I started to create this, which is the initial design I came up with. Uh, initially it had a vine neck. Uh, it was going to be a maple fretboard too, because I got a bit of a hard on for those. But uh, ended up being convinced otherwise from the guys on the gem site to go ebony and pyramids as well. So, but yeah, the idea behind this design is like that. Steve there, Steve Vi. This is his necklace with the volume and um, tone knobs incorporated into his like famous ringed necklace that he wears. Uh, you've got the Vi logo here. Um, you know, third eye and all that spiritual stuff he's into. Uh, yeah, initially it was just a design for the front, and I didn't, I didn't really know, you know, well, what I'll do with it. On the other sides, I guess it would have just been black. Uh, so yes, entered that into the competition. Uh, there's the headstock there. Uh, entered it in the competition, and it got drawn. And over the months between when I entered it in the competition and and when it got drawn. I uh, I really fell in love with this design. I got to the point where I really, really wanted to own this guitar for real. So I started doing a bit of research and trying to figure out how I would go about painting something like this myself. So yes, so then I started experimenting while I was waiting for the competition to be drawn. Um, this was just a little cardboard seven that I got from the shop I used it to sort of test going around corners because I was going to take it around the guitar itself so I just started mucking around with certain things this has got a bit of a clear coat on it as well I started playing around with clear coats and seeing if I could get it right uh, I moved on to a <coughs> a piece of wood that I got from the hardware store and just sanded it back and um, you know and how I've done that is I, I painted it white and then I put on um, painter's masking tape, very low tack stuff so it doesn't leave sticky residue behind. And then I just cut it all out with a scalpel um, and then peeled it out so it's just a giant stencil really. Um, yeah, so I did this test block and clear coated it. That seemed to come up okay. Did a bit of wet sanding and polishing and that was alright. Um, then I came along to this one well, that looks alright in this, in this video but if we look up real close I don't know if it's going to see it, there's a lot of crazing on there I did a bunch of clear coats and then it looked good for about four months and then it just started cracking like crazy and you can see there with the light reflection that it's not it's not flat anymore, that, that was buffed perfectly crystal you know glass and then over four months that just started to go yeah, that was that was the date there, final test. That's when I did it. Um, yeah, it just started to go bad real quick. So um, I decided against clear coating myself. So I ended up I ended up just um, deciding that I paint the body and then I would send it to a professional luthier, which was Et Guitars, and he's done a fantastic job. And here she is. Just uh, get a bit of a, a look here. There it is there. It come up beautiful. It's, it's 
this thing plays better than my Gem 7V White by almost twice as much, so I'll just grab it out. Uh, yeah, so you can see there the design goes right around the body. Um, yep. uh, on the back, I've got <coughs> this Steve Vai plate that I got made from a friend in Indonesia that I found on Facebook. He makes these awesome, um, makes these awesome aluminium etched plates or feels a bit heavier than aluminium, so I don't know if it is or not, but that's etched metal. I'll just lay this down. <coughs> and see, yeah, it's a uh, metal. It's beautiful. Steve Vai going off his head there. Um, yeah, I've got my family's names hidden in here. I've got 2010 and, you know, kids, and there's my wife. and There's my eldest son and my youngest son. And my five-year-old daughter there. So, so yeah. So that's that's the guitar. So yeah, you can see the design there. I was going to do in the handle there, but uh, it was really too difficult to get in there. So I decided against it at the last minute. Yeah, so uh, hang on, I'll just. So, what we've got. Oh, a light there. So, yeah, there's the, there's the guitar. She's, uh, she's a corker. He, I guess. It's a, it's a boy. It's Steve. Um, yeah, so I was convinced to go another way with this guitar, which was the Zebra pickups there. I think they look great. I didn't warm to them at first, but. After looking at uh, some mock-ups that Mungo Jerry did on the gem side, I was just blown away after a while. I was like, yeah, this is the one. So, yeah, I got... Um... Oh, oh. Let's lay this down here. Yeah, so... Um... And this neck is just fantastic. It's colourful. Very colourful. I put the Ibanez logo on, even though it's not truly an Ibanez, but uh, I couldn't have one guitar like this without that logo on, because it's a tribute, really, to Steve and and the guitar, the gem guitar. So we've got a low pro edge here. Uh, this here, I decided to get a Mojo put in here, because I've already got a gem 7V white, so I wanted to go something different than the Evolution, so I've got a Mojo in there. This is a... This is a great pickup. I can see why Joe's honed this over the years. It's just brilliant. It's really, really beautiful. And these are just Evos. Uh, kind of a bit of a difference in sound. It's, it's, they are very different. So when you flick, you know, when you flick from one to the other, when you're playing, it um, changes a little bit. But it's, it, you know, passes for when I'm playing gigs with it. So yeah, no, it's, um, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, so yeah, all this black. He obviously is Steve Vai in his Passion and Warfare days where he had his wild, long hair. So, uh, yeah, that, that was the idea behind the design. And, uh, yeah, there, there she is. So I shall uh, stop crapping on about this thing now and, and move on to a new project. But um, I know a lot of you wanted to see this thing, so, so there it is. Okay, I better uh, shut this off. Hopefully, very soon I can get a, a signature from Steve on here one day if I can ever get to meet him. Uh, he'll probably sue my ass off because it's because it's a Ibanez copy or something. I don't know. <laughs> he wouldn't do that. Yeah, beautiful guitar, absolutely beautiful. I love it, and it's given me some serious gas. To keep on going so uh, I want more guitars I don't think the wife's going to agree with me though so yeah so there it is there's the evolution uh, all right I'll catch you later on thanks for watching